Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to study the shear and bending moment diagram. Shear and bending moment diagrams provide detailed information about the variation of the shear and moment along the beam's axis. In order to properly design a beam, we need to determine the maximum shear and bending moment in the beam. These are vital information which can be used to decide where to place reinforcement materials within the beam or how to proportion the size of the beam at various points along its length. Or what should be the proper cross section of the beam. Or where the place supports. Before we start, we need to establish sign conventions for external and developed internal forces as follows. First, for external forces, upward acting forces in y direction are positive. Forces acting to the right in x direction are positive and counterclockwise moments are positive. For internal forces, the internal sign convention is generally being used to plot the axial force, shear and bending moment diagrams. Axial force denoted by P, a force that is directed along or parallel to the member is the axial force. When it is in tension mode, it causes tension in the member it is positive. And when it is compression mode, it causes compression in the member, it is negative. Shear force, denoted as V, this is a force that is direction perpendicular to the member. If it causes clockwise rotation of the beam segment, it is positive. If it causes counterclockwise rotation, then it is negative. Bending moment, denoted as M, this is a moment that causes the beam to bend in a plane. If it causes sagging, smiling face, it is a positive. If it causes hogging as it curves upward, it is negative. Relationships among load and shear force. The slope of shear diagram V versus X at each point is equal to the intensity of the distributed loading at the point. WX equals DV by DX. Similarly, the slope of the moment diagram M versus X at each point is equal to shear load V at each point. VX equals DM by DX. In other words, the area under the distributed loading diagram is equal to the change in the shear force. Delta V equals integral of WX DX. This means the area under shear diagram is equal to the change in moment. Delta M equals integral of V X DX. The first step in drawing shear and bending moment diagrams is to draw the free body diagram as we also call it FBD. We need to identify all known forces and all possible unknown reactions. Do not forget to label and dimension your diagram properly. The second step is to determine reactions of the beam using global equilibrium equations. Basically, at this stage, we are considering the entire beam. Do not forget the sign conventions. The third step is to solve the unknown reactions. Calculate the shear force using methods of sections and or load, shear force, and bending moment relationships. Then we will draw the shear force and bending moment diagrams. Now we're going to look at an example. Let's draw the shear and moment diagrams for the following beam. Let's assume that we have a simply supported beam, which one side is pinned and the other end is roller supported. The first step is to draw the free body diagram, FBD, of the beam. One point to remember is that linear distributed loadings, like the one you see in this example, produce a resultant force having a magnitude equal to the area using the loading diagram. In this example, it is 10 times 5 equals 50 kilonewtons, and having a location that passes through the centroid of this area. In this example, the centroid of rectangle is in the half of its base, which is at 2.5 meters. Note that at point A, we have a concentrated moment of 100 kilonewton meters. The second step is to determine the support reactions using global equilibrium equations, but first, Remember to draw your sign convention to avoid any calculation mistake. First, 
sum of all the moments at point A must be zero. Second, sum of all the forces in Y direction must be equal to zero. This gives us the reaction force at point A equals to RYA equals 12.5 kilonewtons. This value is the shear force at point A. VA equals 12.5 kilonewtons. Also, sum of all forces in X direction must be zero. Therefore, RXC is equal zero. Now we can start drawing the shear force diagram V versus X. We know that at point A, the shear force is positive 12.5 kilonewtons. Therefore, we start from zero and then go up to positive 12.5 kilonewtons. Then it is constant to point B because there is no loads between point A and B. At point B, we have a concentrated force of negative 20 kilonewtons. Therefore, our shear force decreases to negative 7.5 kilonewtons. 12.5 minus 20 equals 7.5. We know that the reaction force at point C is equal to 57.5 kilonewtons. Since we have uniform loading between B and C, therefore the shear diagram must be linear, negative constant slope to negative 57.5 kilonewtons. We can now construct the moment diagram, M versus X, using the area under the shear diagram. First, we have a concentrated moment of 100 kilonewton meters at point A. Therefore, we go up to 100 kilonewton meters in moment diagram. In other words, our start point is 100 kilonewton meters. The change in moment diagram delta M between points A and B is equal to the area under the shear diagram between points A and B, which is 62.5 kilonewton meter. Therefore, the magnitude of the moment at point B is 162.5 kilonewton meter. Since the shear diagram is uniform, horizontal straight line, the moment diagram is linear. The moment diagram between points B and C is parabolic because of sequence of curving explained earlier. You can double check your answer by calculating the area under the shear curve between point B and C which is 162 kilo newton meter. According to the constructed shear and moment diagram, the maximum shear and the maximum moment in this beam are 57.5 kilo newtons and 162.5 kilo newton meter, respectfully. The maximum shear is located at point C, while the maximum moment is located in the middle of the beam. These are important information, magnitudes and locations that we need in order to properly design a beam. We managed to solve this problem by using the graphical method alone. However, in most problems, we need to combine the equation method with graphical method in order to solve the problem. Let's draw the shear and bending moment diagrams of the following beam. The first step is to draw the free body diagram FBD of the beam. In order to do that, the distributed load is divided into triangular and rectangular component loadings and these loadings are then replaced by the resultant forces having a magnitude equal to the area under each load diagram, which in this example is 96 kN, and having a location that passes through the centroid of each component loadings. In order to calculate the support reactions, we need to use the equilibrium equations. Here again, before we start our calculations, we draw our sign conventions. First, sum of all the moments at point A must be zero. This gives us the reaction force at point B. RB equals 112 kilonewton. Second, sum of all forces in Y direction must be equal to zero. This gives us the reaction force at point A equals to RYA equals 80 kilonewton. This value is the shear force at point A. Also, sum of all the forces in X direction must be zero. Therefore, RXB equals zero. Now we start to draw the shear diagram. We know that we start from point A with shear force of positive 80 kN and must finish at point B 
with shear force of negative 112 kilonewton. Besides, since the Wx is linear, then the Vx must be parabolic like this. In order to draw the moment diagram, we need to know where the shear force is zero along the beam's axis. According to the diagram, it is zero at x meter from point A. Therefore, we need to find x. Since the point of maximum moment occurs when dm over dx equals v equals zero, and from sequence of curving, we know that the moment diagram must be cubic starting from zero at point A goes to zero at point B, and it is maximum at distance x from point A. We section the beam at distance x. Applying the equilibrium equations, we try to define V and M as function of x. First, we draw the free body diagram of this section. Here again, the trapezoidal loading is replaced by rectangular and triangle distributions. The intensity of the triangular load at section is found by proportion. From equilibrium equations, we know that the sum of all forces in y direction must be zero. This gives us v as a function of x as follows. Choosing the positive root, x will be 12.98 meters. Also, sum of all moments must be zero. This gives us m as function of x as follows. Therefore, the moment at x equals 12.98 meter will be 579.95 kilo newton meter. From the diagram, the maximum shear force and the maximum moment are 112 kilo newton and 579.95 kilo newton meter respectively. I hope this tutorial was helpful. Best of luck with the lab.